Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really fun concertina box card to show you today. Mine's an Easter theme because I'm doing my Easter series this year, but you can easily change this up to be suitable for a birthday, wedding, Christmas, Halloween, anything. So it's really lovely. This one is, let me just go through the size because I can't remember. So this is four and a half by four and a half squared. I did do one a couple of years ago and actually one of my lovely crafting friends shared a version of my one that she done um, over on Mixed Up Crafters and it reminded me of this box style and I thought I'm gonna you know, revisit that one again but this time I've done it slightly bigger. So I do like to, if I'm gonna revisit a card I like to change it again so it just gives you even more inspiration and ideas. So this one's slightly bigger. You got room on the back there to write your message and then when you open it up, this piece comes out and it spells Easter and if I just bring up everything there you can see this is using the Welcome Spring by Hell's Cupperdidge magazine and I fussy cut all of these cupcakes with the little kind of Easter mini eggs on top. I've die cut all the letters with the glitter paper and foam so there's some dimension there and look at that one in the end. How cute is that? You can make this as long as you want. Once you see how it's put together, so that if you do want to have Christmas or Halloween spelt out, you can really kind of, yeah, just add as much as you want to it. The box size does allow you to fit more in, so you could easily extend the inside and still have this same size box that I give you. You've got nice little tabs there to be able to open and close it. It fits really well, and I think that makes such a pretty nice box card. It can just be di displayed like that as well, so if someone maybe doesn't have a lot of room or they like to keep the things afterwards and look after them, this just is perfect for that. So I will link up the one that I did make before as well, just so if you do want to you know, make a slightly smaller one. I think it was only about three and three quarters or something. It's not too different, but again, it is slightly different. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so this is everything you're going to need. This is the magazine I'm using, the Welcome Spring by Hell's Couple Ditch. Really lovely, and you'll see it feature a few more times. As you know, or have probably heard, I do love all the illustrations. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be using. So I've already gone ahead and done all of the, the bits inside, and I'll talk you through that in a second, because that is the stuff that takes the time. All of this is really quick and easy. It was the decoration for me that took a little bit longer. So for your lid and base you want two pieces that are seven and a half by seven and a half and then what we're going to do is cut a tiny little piece off of two sides of of the base now if you're happy with the 16th inch of a measurement <laughs> that's a mouthful to get out then you actually want one piece that's seven and a half by seven and a half and one piece that is seven and seven sixteenths by seven and seven sixteenths but what i'm also going to do is just show you a quick way to just take off a little slither from like i said two sides so for the minute don't worry, just have two pieces of seven and a half by seven and a half. Then you want one piece that's four by eight and you want to score along the eight inch side of four inches. Okay, so just score right down in the middle. What I would say as well, score on both sides because we're going to be concertina folding these. Everyone's probably going to have them different ways. So if you just score on both sides there at four, it's just a bit easier. And then you want three pieces that are eight and a half by four. And you want to score every one at four and eight along the long side. Again, flip it over and just score it four and eight. And it will just loosen those score lines. So four and eight. Just do that on those three pieces. Okay, and while we've got the scoreboard out on one of these pieces of seven and a half by seven and a half, you want to score at one and a half on all four sides. So one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, and one and a half. And it's the other one this one here that we're going to trim slightly in a minute or this will be the seven and seven sixteenths of an inch squared okay so some of you that can do that measurement you know you feel happy cutting it and stuff then fine then you'll need one two three four five six seven eight nine and then one more to write your sentiment on the back so ten pieces of this size but I've got nine in the pink and then one will be in white and these are three and three quarters of an inch squared. Now if you want to add any layers to them, so I've got this green layer here, this is dropped down by a quarter of an inch, so this is three and a half by three and a half squared. But you might want to add more of those layers on these ones as well, because you might be obviously decorating them differently to me. So if you do want to add that layer, then that's three and a half by three and a half. But what I've done, just bring it up a bit closer, so I've embossed all of these pink squares 
and then I've just fussy cut and layered up all of these, put them on foam adhesive. I've cut my letters and also cut them again in foam adhesive just to give it all some dimension. And I'm probably gonna add some sequins to all of this as well once it's all put together and then I can decide how else I want to decorate it. So yeah, nine pieces in color and then one in white to go on the back to write your message. And then you want eight to 14 pieces that are one and a quarter by four and a quarter. The reason why I say eight to 14, you'll need eight pieces to decorate the sides of your lid and your base, because even though it's the base, it will still be exposed when you pull it all out. But you may also wanna mat the three layers inside the lid and the base. So that will give you another six. Okay, so that's all of the scoring done for the minute. And then if you grab your trimmer, and then with the piece that you haven't scored, so we've done that one piece that was seven and a half by seven and a half and scored at one and a half on all four sides. You'll then have that plain piece. You may have already trimmed yours down to seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. But if I pop this in my trimmer, now depending on what trimmer or guillotine you have, sorry, this is a guillotine, you'll see there mine is spot on. Bring it in here. It's bang on seven and a half. See there? Now there you'll see a smaller little line just there. That is the seven and seven seven the seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. So all of these you've got seven and then you've got seven and a quarter, seven and a half where this is, seven and three quarters and then eight. In between that again you've got slightly smaller um, lines, that's your one eighth of an inch, and then you know quarter, three eighths, half, five eighths, three quarters, and then seven eighths. Then in between that again, you have those smaller lines, okay? And they are the they will be all together. If you count every line, there will be sixteen, and that's the sixteenths of an inch, okay? So that's where we are with that. So all I want to do with this piece here is just bring it down to that small little marker just below the seven and a half marker. So it's not the seven and three eighths. It's the one between seven and three eighths and seven and a half, okay? But also you can just take a slither off. So you can also, you know, guesstimate it. So, which I do with a lot of my things, but you can see there what I've just cut away. So it's not one eighth of an inch, it's just smaller. And I'm just gonna bring that around again, line it up and then trim that, okay? Now, not everybody's trimmers or guillotines might have those extra measurements, because some don't. You might have to use a ruler and mark it, but um, you can see now I've got two perfect pieces that I've cut away there, and that is one sixteenth of an inch width, okay? Right, so now that piece is done, you can bring your scoreboard back in and just score again oh, at one and a half on all four sides. And just by taking off that tiny little piece that we've done, it will allow the lid to fit nicely over the top of the base. So I've just scored at one and a half now on each of those. Now to not get these confused, in the middle here I'm just going to put a B for base and T for top, okay? Just so you don't get them confused, because I mean it wouldn't be the end of the world if they were the opposite side. And I think on the one I done last year I did actually end up constructing it together and the, the base was on the top. So it isn't the end of the world, but obviously you do preferences you want the the top one there so that's all the scoring done and that's I mean it's not that wasn't hard I was just trying to explain to you really that extra measurement because a lot of people do message me about those sixteenths of an inch or taking off that little bit so right now we want to fold and burnish our score lines so I'm just going to do that on both pieces okay and also do that on these pieces here Okay, so it doesn't really matter which way because you will be folding it in lots of, you know, different directions. So just burnish them all and then go back and burnish them in the opposite directions. Okay, now also on your tab piece that you've got at the end here, you just want to take little wedges off of this here. Now we just want to do some cutting, so I'm just starting with my base here, no particular reason, just the one I've got. And you just want to cut up these score lines to the first score line, so very neatly because obviously your base and lid, like I said, will all be on display, so you want to make sure it's nice and neat. So I'm just cutting up to the first score line there, okay? And then just take some very small wedges off, you don't want to take too much. 
and this is the bit that you may decide you want to cover are these tabs because you will see them inside so I'm not going to take too much off just enough close nicely but so that's what you will have there and flip the whole thing around and do that again okay so that's that one there and you want to repeat that again on your lid okay okay so you'll have two pieces like so next we just need to pop them together so very straightforward those of you that have made lids a lot we'll just be able to whiz through this bit but you basically just want to add some glue to the top of your tab there bring this down and then bring your side around so you create that really nice right angle make sure it's perfectly lined up you're not pulling it in too much or not enough you need to line up that score line you know here so that's that one and then go around to the next one bring that one down and bring this up and around that's why I like to use the wet glue because it does allow you to move things around until everything kind of fits in nicely like so and then do the same on this end okay so there is my tops that's my lid and then you just want to do exactly the same again on your base okay and now you should be able to pop your lid very neatly over your base and you'll have a real nice closure now because they're exactly the same depth so one and a half if you push it right down it just make it fiddly to get it out so if you've got a punch if you don't have a punch you can just cut a little triangle just cut a little notch out something that will allow you to be able to lift this up so all I'm going to do is bring my punch in and just cut in the middle a small little semicircle like so so I'm just get creating a little finger pull what's it called what's this called when you do this there's a name for it and I can't think what it is but again you don't have to be too exact but roughly so now if I pop that on completely like so it can go right down to the bottom but it now means that I can pop my thumb and my finger in those little areas there and pull it off easily and that's when we were going to pull out our concertina so that's that piece all done next we want to put together the concertina part itself so what's going to happen is so we've got our lid so the piece that we just cut this out will be on the left and one of these pieces this is when you can just flip them over you want it to be mountain and then valley with the tab okay for this first piece and it's going to stick in here but you can see it's obviously much smaller than the lid that you, you want it to be because we've got a lot of stuff going into this area so the the key here is making sure that you stick this in the center if it's slightly out it won't hurt too much if it's slightly but it does need to be in the middle if, you, if I bring this up can you see I've got an even border between the white here and all down here and that's the same along here and when I fold that there as well so you need this piece to sit as centered in the lid as possible now, I'm just thinking I might add some nice pattern paper because this is my image that's going to stick on this piece that's going to go in the lid so it's going to have that there but I think there's quite a lot of white there so to allow everything to kind of look nice and really pop so this is four and a half by four and a half so I'm going to do four and three eighths by four and three eighths so four and three eighths by four and three eighths and I'm going to do two pieces so I've got one at the other end as well although I've just cut that wrong so I'm going to have to cut it again I cut it the wrong way my card stock so four and three eighths by four and three eighths I might use a bit of this on the lid as well actually so we shall see right so I've got two pieces of four and three eighths there as well so now what I think I'll do first is stick this inside like so and then this piece can go in and you can it's a lot easier to get that matched up with a frame 
like so, and then that can go on, and the yellow in the flowers complements really nicely. Okay, so if you want to do that, cut those two pieces first of all. I'm going to use wet glue for this because it allows us to wiggle things around a little bit before it actually sets. So it just help us a little bit there. But this piece here pretty much just will fit in perfectly. And then just make sure that's all nicely stuck down. Okay, and then now you want to see how you're going to pull the lid out. So we're going to pull it out. Yeah. So you want these pieces here. You want it in this orientation. So you want them on the sides here. You don't want them on the top and the bottom. You want them on the sides. So make sure you've got your box this way. And then you're going to stick this one down in there. Now I'm just thinking what I might do is actually start to stick these on first before I stick it in there because it's easier. So I'm going to again use my wet glue. Stick that one down it's much easier for me to get that nice border so that's that one and then I've got E for Easter so again in fact what I do is we'll continue and stick all this concertina down because that was what I was going to suggest at the beginning wasn't it so now grab another piece of this and you're going to stick that right over that tab so the other tab is on this end okay so you're just making a really long concertina fold so I'm going to add some wet glue on there. Make sure you stick that one down perfectly over there and then you will have another one with the tab. You're sticking that over there again so again just add a little bit of glue, pop that to one side, okay like so and then the last one is going to stick over there and it will be plain there'll be no tab because that is the piece that's going to stick into your base so you're just going to again add some glue so it's just lots of parts to this it's it is a straightforward project but I'm just also trying to make sure that I you know show you the way to assemble it the easiest so now I just want to make sure I get these all right so E A S T E R. So I'm just going to go and stick them all down. Okay, and I've also just stuck down my last one there as well. So how it should fold, because we scored on both sides, this should be quite floppy. This one you're going to start with a, if I do it this way, so you want your first one like this, so you've got a mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. So you should have one, two, four mountains and one, two, three valleys. Okay, like so. And then the whole thing will fold. And you can see it's quite thick because I've got lots of foam adhesive. So that's why I wanted to make sure there's lots of room. So I also might want to add some bows. But now that will sit and pull right out and it's going to look... It's going to look really, really cool. I love this. Okay, so again, making sure these pieces here are on the left and the right. I'm going to add some glue all onto the back of this. Okay, and then very carefully, and you can wiggle this around a little bit until you're happy oh, that it's stuck down like so. Looks about right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Like so. Okay. And then the back of this one is going to stick in here, but I want to stick this yellow piece in first. Glue on the back of that one. Pull it all out so you've got a bit of, you know, it's easier for you to fit in. And again, just move that around. Until you're happy, that's nice and straight. Okay, and then the whole thing should perfectly close up like so. Okay, so that is your card. So now, because I'm going to pop this on there with my other bits and pieces, when you come to pull it out, 
we have this really cool how lovely is that? So, some more decoration. Let's do the sides and the top. Okay, so we're going to stick these now onto the sides. With the one where you've already cut that out, thinking about it, you probably should have done that after. So I'm going to stick that over there still, and then I'll just cut the punch out again underneath. But you want to stick it on all four sides of the lid and all four sides of the base. Okay, so you can see now my side's done, so I'm just going to grab my punch again and just come in here. Just come a little bit higher. There we go. Alright, you need to do the same on this side. Okay, so now this should all work really nicely. So there's your box, and then as you pull it out, look at that, and then it can be displayed obviously much further apart. But look how cool that looks. I absolutely love it. Now I'm going to decorate the top. So making sure it's obviously the right way up. I've got a piece of four and three eighths of an inch by four and three eighths. Although that looks like it is wonky. Why is that wonky there? Let's have a little look. Four and three eighths. Oh, so you didn't do that bit properly. So that is going to stick on there. And then over the top I have this piece that is going to sit in the centre like so and add a really nice bit of sparkle so I'm going to stick those two down okay so that's now all stuck down so that's my box and you should have your little kind of finger tabs on the left and the right and then when you open it up it will all open up like so so now I'm going to just decorate the insides of these so that's the optional piece that's where you needed one two three and then one two three because obviously you don't see the ones on this side and then you just need to decorate the back so I'm going to go ahead and get all that done okay so I've stuck everything down and I've actually not done this side so you will only need four so I've done one there there and then there and there but now you can see it all folds up perfectly and on the back I have done a glitter mat there and then I've done a layer of white over the top ready for me to write a little message. I could have stamped something there if I want but there's so much going on here and I probably will end up writing quite a bit which I tend to do so but that's it finished. So there it is, open it up and it comes out and you have this really lovely card. You could also use the back and write other things on there as well if you wanted to but how lovely, that's how it looks when it's displayed. So perfect for the top of the fireplace, a long shelf or anywhere really and um, yeah, thoroughly pleased with this one. So I hope you like this slightly larger version and um, give it a go. I've done mine for Easter but like with most of my projects this works for so many occasions. So I think it'd be great for birthdays obviously but even as a wedding card, I mean you can see now how easy it is to add on these pieces so if you want to do Christmas you want to have Halloween you know congratulations it's so easy to extend this and make it any length that you want so give it a go let me know what you think and uh, yeah hope you've enjoyed it if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye